Introduction from a Handbook of Volapük by Charles E. Sprague, member of the Academy of Volapük, president of the Institute of Accounts. Read for the LibriVox Language Learning Collection, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Volapük is designed to serve as a means of communication between persons whose native languages are not the same. The hope has often been expressed that one of the great national languages may by common consent be selected as a universal language but there is not the slightest probability that this great advantage will be voluntarily given to one nation or that any one of the great powers can ever impose its language on others. Volapük is one of numerous attempts at solving the problem of a common language. Without entering into a discussion of their merits, it is sufficient to say that no other attempt has ever passed beyond the experimental stage or been actually used to any considerable extent for the communication of thought volapük has now become so widely diffused that it can no longer be treated as a mere project and some acquaintance with its history and the general principles of its construction will be desired by educated persons this world language was invented and first published in eighteen seventy nine by johann martin schleyer a german and a priest of the roman catholic church who had become a very accomplished linguist the system is entirely his production and has not been modified in any essential point his aim was first to produce a language capable of expressing thought with the greatest clearness and accuracy second to make its acquisition as easy as possible to the greatest number of human beings he resolved to seek this end by observing the processes of the many languages with which he was acquainted following them as models wherever they are clear accurate and simple but avoiding their faults obscurities and difficulties the material and the form or the dictionary and the grammar call upon different mental faculties one stock of words is retained by exercise of the memory therefore the radicals or root words were generally so chosen by him from existing languages that the greatest number of persons might have the fewest unfamiliar words to memorize since english is spoken as a mother tongue by more millions than any other language he took from it more root words with or without modification than from any other or about forty per cent of the whole the selection is limited by such considerations as brevity distinctness and ease of utterance difficult and unusual sounds and combinations being excluded thus in selecting a word for the idea man the english word is found very suitable especially as it is substantially the same in all other teutonic tongues and it has been adopted 
but sounded as in german the word house or haus for the idea of a dwelling is found objectionable for several reasons the h is to be avoided because unpronounceable by some nations and the s is already appropriated for the plural termination the teutonic roots being barred out recourse is had to the latin and dom is selected we are also familiar with this in english as in domestic in hand again we have the same trouble with h and also with the two consonants coming together the plural hands being unpronounceable by certain peoples the latin root man will not help us here because man is already appropriated therefore the transposed form num is adopted slightly assisting the memory as to grammar the first requisite is regularity and the second is simplicity there was before the inventor a choice between the inflectional and the analytical modes whether to express the relations between words by modifications in form or by separate words as connectives he inclined to the former and his language is rather inflectional than analytical it has four cases the nominative being the unmodified form and the genitive dative and accusative designated by vowel endings in selecting these endings the inventor has greatly aided the memory by employing the first three vowels a e i in their regular order in the verb the distinctions of tense are denoted by the vowel series a e e i o u at the beginning while the persons are distinguished by affixing the pronouns ob i ol thou etc the prefixed p marks the passive voice the remaining inflectional forms are provided for by simple and regular terminations for some time after the appearance of schleyer's grammar his adherents were few and his project was ignored by the scientific and literary world it spread first to austria where it awakened considerable interest and where the first society for its propagation was formed at vienna in eighteen eighty two until eighteen eighty four its adherents outside of the german-speaking countries were very few and scattered in that year it invaded holland and belgium and a great many societies sprang up in those countries in eighteen eighty five dr august kirchhoff's professor in the school of higher commercial studies at paris introduced it to the french nation by several articles lectures and treatises this created a great sensation in france and a strong national association pour la propagation du de Vulepuc, was formed which numbers such men as francisque sarcy emile gautier and dr aller professor kirchhoff's aroused enthusiasm not only in france but in other countries where his works were circulated spain was the next followed by italy and portugal during eighteen eighty five and eighteen eighty six the countries of the north sweden denmark and russia also received the new language thus the extension of volapük has been geographical and the english-speaking peoples are the last of the great european races to be affected by it 
in each country as a rule its popularization has immediately followed the publication of a grammar peculiarly suited to its people professor kerkhoff's some months ago estimated the number of persons who have studied volapük at two hundred ten thousand this may be somewhat too high but the number is certainly very large in vienna alone the classes during the winter of eighteen eighty six to seven were attended by two thousand five hundred students one hundred thirty eight societies for its cultivation have been organized in different places eleven periodicals are now published devoted primarily to volipuk at constance breslau madrid paris vienna munich milan puerto rico stockholm abibro denmark and antwerp the youngest being four months old and the oldest six years most of these contain articles in the language of the country as well as in volapük but three of them one being a humorous paper are exclusively in volapük the bibliography of the subject as given at length in le volapük number ten comprises ninety-six books in thirteen languages this does not include articles in periodicals nor schleier's single-sheet compendiums in various languages nor works merely announced as forthcoming two general assemblies or congresses of the advocates of volapük have been held the first at friedrichshafen in august eighteen eighty four the second at munich in august eighteen eighty seven the third is to take place at paris probably in august eighteen eighty nine the congress of eighteen eighty seven established a threefold organization a general association of the supporters of volapük volapük club valémique an academy of volapük cadem volapuka a central organ volapuka bled zenodique schleier's own weltsprachblatt published at constance was designated as the organ and its name has been changed accordingly each of these organizations has its officers schleier remaining at the head of the whole movement the director of the academy is professor kerkhoffs his colleagues number at present seventeen from various nations germany austro-hungary spain italy portugal holland england the united states russia syria the academy is expected to edit the standard dictionary and grammar to authorize new words to adopt any necessary changes and to give their sanction to approved works of instruction the most obvious application of volipük is for international correspondence especially commercial correspondence which is numerically the most important it will require no argument to convince the business world that a common language if easily learned and once established will be an immense facilitation of commerce this modest claim is all that is necessary to put forth on behalf of volapük at present if firmly established for this purpose the extension of its usefulness into the fields of science diplomacy and literature may safely be left to the future to determine as well as whether it will ever be used by travellers it will in any event be watched with great interest and its rise and progress will form a novel and curious chapter of history in issuing the fifth edition of this work the author takes occasion to thank the numerous readers 
who have aided him with their suggestions and have enabled him to make each successive edition more perfect the present one has been conformed to the latest edition of schleyer's dictionary the principal changes being in respect to the endings an el yel am and ot end of an introduction from a handbook of volepuc by charles e sprague read by nicholas james bridgewater